in uh, the fall of 2011, uh, I took my class Artificial Intelligence online. And what I really did is send one email. And the email said, here's a Stanford class. You can take it for free, and you have the same exams as Stanford students. And to my shocking surprise, 160,000 students signed up. So we put the class online. It was not lectures, it was mostly exercises. And 160,000 students. The number went down, 23,000 graduated. But the type students that signed up were people from all over the world, all trades, all ages. It made me realize as an educator, my obligation, of course, is to empower other people. It was a wonderful medium to reach people all over the world, outside the walls of Stanford. People often say, don't worry about your career, your career finds you. Late in my life, my career found me, and I had to really go for online education. So I started a company called Udacity, which offers online education. We're doing really high quality work, I believe. Yeah, the company is a social venture, it's venture capital based. We're about 30 people right now. Uh, we build classes mostly in STEM, in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Some of them are for high school students, and some go all the way up to uh, employability. So we have companies like Google and others sponsoring us financially to build courses on uh, areas and skills that they want the workforce to have. What we're learning is that the pedagogy, the way to address students uh, online is very different from the way you do it in a classroom. So in a classroom, kind of the best way of many students is to lecture them. And lectures on video just don't work. People are distracted by Facebook and other distractors. So what we're learning is that the student engagement is a key factor in learning. And the way to do this, we steal from video games. Video games train you, usually something like Angry Bird trains you how slingshots work. And they, they, they draw you in by constant assessment. Assessment is absolutely paramount, but giving you as much time as you want to reach the next level. That's what we do in learning. So when we train you to do math, we replace Angry Bird with mathematics, and we still have constant assessment. You have as much time as it takes. And when you're done with it, you feel really good about yourself. Every time a technology changes, the first generation copies the previous thing. So for example, early movies were recordings of, of stage play and early television was radio reporters in front of a camera. And as we know today, cinematography is just very different in movies than there are uh, on the theater stage. That means um, learning and online education will be very different from the classroom experience. And that's one of the things that happened in the past that most people doing online education try to replicate the classroom, and that's where they got stuck. So all classes that we offer are, are free of charge, but we do charge students who want services and credit. So what I foresee for online education in the next 15 years is um, that access will be much, much better. Costs will go down dramatically uh, for the education, I believe. And we can keep upkeep these materials much, much faster than you can uh, recruit and, and retire a professor. So the materials will be much more up-to-date, and industry will have a much bigger say in curating of these materials. And as a result, the students emerging 15 years from now from higher education will be more employable and more job-ready when they're, when they're ready with the education. We've uh, had an extreme su success with employers, with companies. Uh, they're actually funding class development right now, a good number of them, specifically because they're desperate to get highly skilled labor. And it turns out our universities, as, as great a job as they do, very often don't have classes on the latest and, and, and best that's available. So they want to move faster. Society is moving at a faster and faster pace. New technologies come on the market at an unbelievably fast pace today, and the universities can't keep up, so they want us to step in and help. When we work with companies, uh, the companies often give us an expert, and the expert is a technical expert, and we work with that expert to extract the knowledge from his brain and put it into an online format. So, for example, an expert might know something about how to program something. We then make quizzes around this and exercises and little video game-like snippets that students can enjoy and take and learn how to, how to acquire the skill. Some of our best classes are being taught by kids straight off the school who really have a connection with the younger generation, understand video games, and what we're inventing, we're inventing on the fly. I think the effect on the university system uh, depends a, a lot on how the university system actually react to it, whether they ignore it as some universities do or whether they overreact as others do. Uh, but by and large, I think it's going to be uh, a much enhanced access. We will be able to reach students that we can't reach today. So for example, in our current San Jose State Pilot, we reach high school students and give them college credit. And that's something that's very hard to do before. They had to go to campus and pay an exorbitant amount of money to do this, and right now they can do this online. We can reach continuing education, people in midlife and mid-career that are trying to find a new skill, a new job. And we can, most of all, also reach people in the developing world and bring higher education to those individuals. 
So I believe the biggest effect will be on the non-matriculated students, the ones that are outside the system, and that we can now reach. I grew up in Germany, my education was kind of okay. If you go to many places in the world, you can find really, really, really lousy colleges. And I think it's really good that we have now a chance to up the quality for the people in the world.